the WLOO's Waterloo Gardens summer episode. Today we are at Lisa Hercher's home in her backyard and she's got a special treat for us today. Remember we were talking about butterfly gardens and monarch watch? Well Lisa is going to tell us about tagging butterflies and she's going to release a couple for us. Okay. So this is my tagging kit, it's just a notebook, but I, um, I've been doing this since 2016 and we record all the tags. So what the tagging program is through Monarch Watch is it's basically a, it's a research study where they have reached out to the public and anybody can be a citizen scientist and participate. So you just get the tags which are very inexpensive and I have a set of a hundred here and then you and each tag I should say because the monarchs migrate to Mexico and they're the only butterfly that does monarch migrate and they're they that's about 3,000 miles from here so the tag has on it um, you know the the website the email address and the number of the monarch so if if somebody finds this monarch somewhere in mexico or somewhere else along the way they they have the instruction to report it into the database and that's how they can study the the migration and you know look at the monarchs that they find how big they are what when they find them where they come from and I've had actually two that I've tagged that have made it to Mexico <laughs> in the last <laughs> once in 2017 and once in 2021. So that was really exciting for me um, because it was just amazing to think that something that was in my backyard flew all that way. So um, for more information and, you know, to hear the great story about the monarchs and all the things that they're doing for them, um, because their habitats are disappearing and all the things they're doing to help. Um, monarch, monarchwatch.org is where to go to, to learn more. So, got my tagging kit. So, little tag, I like to stick it on a skewer. I don't know, can you zoom in on this? Or <laughs> and I'll grab my butterfly out. I have a couple butterflies that, um, that I just happen to have the chrysalis because I found them in my garden. And sometimes I'll bring them in or I'll keep them on my porch so that they have a better chance of survival because I think it's like right around 3% survive in the wild. And, and they, you know, there are other bugs that eat them. They eat the eggs. Um, they, they have a pretty low chance of survival. So I like to protect them and, and try to increase the numbers. So, okay, stick that. Could you tell us how you tell males from females? Yes, we'll do that. Okay. First, I gotta catch it. All right. So, what we do is, so I've got this butterfly here, and the way that you can tell, that's part of my data. So what I'm gonna record on my data sheet is the number of the tag. And these tags, by the way, have been designed specifically for this purpose. A lot of people ask, well, doesn't that you know, aren't they heavy or isn't it hard to fly all the way to Mexico when you've got this tag? But they've been designed just okay. for this purpose. So what you do when you want to tell if it's a male or a female is you open up the wings very gently. And this is a male. And the way I know is because he's got these two black dots right on either side of his tail, I guess. And they're really, I, I think they're, they're, they're like a gland, but that this is a male. So, close the wings and hold it gently. Now, because it's on this skewer, it's gonna be really easy just to roll right off onto the wing. So, that's what I will do. So, it's all tagged, ready to go. And then, just let him go. And there he goes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Safe journey. Yep. <laughs> be happy. Yeah. Ooh. Um, Ooh. So yeah, and so then I'm gonna write down my data in here in my notebook. And when I'm all done for the year, what I will do is I'll go online and enter all this into the website. Do you want me to do the other one? I mean, are on camera or just do oh, it? Oh, you're so fast at it, why not? Okay. Oh, don't, don't make it wait. 
All right. He was, he was saying he wanted to get out of there. He yeah, really I can. So he's around. a male. <laughs> yeah. So it's the date. He's a male. Um, the the number and whether it was wild or reared. And these were actually reared, but most of them are wild. And I have a butterfly net here. And we catch, we keep it right here by the back door because every time we see a butterfly, we catch it and tag it. Huh? So. <laughs> oh, I zipped it up. Thank you, because he could have got up. So this one, open up these wings without losing <laughs> him or her. And I also try to be really careful because I don't want to rub any of the scales off of their wings with my fingers. I'm going to open this one up. This one is a female. No dots. They also have a darker stripe right along the bottom of their top wing. So right here again, I'm just going to take this tag and roll it right on. And... She didn't stay long. No. <laughs> okay, that was it. Oh. Thank you. You that are welcome. Well, the, you know, the funnest thing, and I, I wanted to arrange a field trip. I th we could do that. Do that. We have several nets actually, and we go out to the, you know, to Goose Pond, or I've gone to Old Brick, and it's just really fun because you catch like. We used to go over on McKay Way mm -hmm. um, before all the houses were built, and it was the best place to go because there was a ton of clover growing. And my husband and I would just walk up and down, and we would tag 100 butterflies in a couple hours. Oh, my gosh. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And one time we appealed to the city <laughs> to not mow it because all that beautiful clover was growing. And, but there was a neighbor there who didn't want, did, didn't want the grass to grow, so... Um, yeah. yeah, and now, now all the houses are there, so there's no more going to that space. But if we see a, a field of clover, we know that's a great place to go. Hey, Lisa, would you say that that chrysalis is close to hatching? There? Yes, actually. If you look at it yeah. really closely, there's one here too. Just um, open this up, and you can. So the you know when they're when they're in their chrysalis, at first they're green, and then as it it dry, it'll keep drying and. Um, and at this stage, I could pull it off and even yeah, hold it. But see, yeah, you can see the wings right through. You can see the wings right there. It's, it's translucent right now. And it'll probably hatch by tomorrow morning for sure. Still pretty green, but this one's just about ready. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> And the, I think monarch chrysalises are some of those most beautiful natural Aren't things I've ever seen. Aren't they gorgeous? Those, gold, that, those mm -hmm. little gold dots mm -hmm. on them. Yeah, like a jewel. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lisa. Yes. Thank you. Oops. You don't have to zip it up. Nobody's going to escape now. That's, that's <laughs> true. Not till tomorrow, and then we'll start all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to WLOOCATV's Waterloo Gardens series. Today we are filming a summer episode at Lisa Hertrich's home. Her garden has changed a lot since we were here last. Lisa's about to give us a tour of what's new and what's happening. Okay, thanks for being here. So, um, my garden is just it's a it's a cottage garden is really the style um because i and it's always changing and always different and i'm always either moving things around or bringing something new in or trying something new and just like any gardener I, it's a big experiment all the time so i can talk about my favorite plants but the butter you know for the butterflies and for the monarch way station you know the requirement is to what to be a certified monarch way station which is something anyone can do. It's just having, you know, a number of different types of milkweed growing and nectar flowers so that they they have that, you know, they have a place to 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 rear and to grow and to to feed as they're passing through. So um, I like to do that. And I have a lot of perennials, I also have a lot of annuals and I have a lot of vegetables and <coughs> herbs and they're all together in one one garden just because that's 
all I have. So this is what I do is I just try to make the most of my space. So, um, I have, so I, I grow several different types of milkweed. The, this one over here, it, which is not in good shape this year, I, which is my favorite, but you can't really tell. It's behind the, um, right behind there. And it's got, the, it's really, that's their, that's the monarch's favorite. <coughs> so, um, it's an annual and I grow it from seed every year. This year was not a good year for it. And there were lady, uh, or milkweed beetles, which uh, first time I've seen them that oh. just ate everything. So. Um, yeah, I, I always get a lot of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is a new one that I'm growing this year. Um, it's Gomphocarpus physocarpus. And that's the the botanical name. And this is, it's, it's kind of in the milkweed. It doesn't have, it's not Asclepius, but it's it's in the milkweed family, and it is a, it is for monarchs. That's the um, one with the big seed pods that look the like the big pufferfish. Yes. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's another name for it um, that I was really embarrassed asking for when I went to the garden center. And I mean, literally, like I I knew what it was to ask for, and I I was can I say it? <laughs> <laughs> I. I I would and I would. okay yeah it's so they call it called. the common name is hairy balls and <laughs> I I so I went to Ebert's because I didn't I didn't grow it by seed even though I did have some seeds I, but I didn't didn't have any so I I went to Ebert's and I was like I I would like to some <laughs> this milkweed and I'm really and I just told him I said I'm embarrassed to say the name and he's like oh hairy balls yeah come on over here and I'll show you so we went and got it it's a gorgeous plant but it is a gorgeous plant I lovely. love it and the the seed pods are amazing and I love yeah. the flowers too oh yeah they're delicate so I have three of those and I'm gonna grow that every year from now on mm -hmm. what greenhouse did you buy it from Ebert's Ebert's yeah yeah and they had nice big beautiful plants I might try to grow it from seed next year. And what's the the grass-like plant that's behind it? Those I just bought. I just went and got recently over at um, Deerfield Greenhouse, and they. Oh God, you're probably going to ask me about something I can't remember the name of. Um, it is in the. Um, what are the grasses? I, I think it's a millet. It's yeah. It's a millet. Really? <laughs> that's what it is. It's a millet. Yes. And I just thought it was pretty, so I bought yeah. a bunch of it, and I put some there, I put some over there, and yeah, so it's, you know, um, it's been a rough year for the garden with the water and the rain, you know, the lack of rain, the heat, the dryness, mm -hmm. so um, things, you know, I was really, I was excited because every year it's, it's like, I'm really excited to start the year, and then and then I have everything in, and then I'm like, oh, I didn't didn't like how it looked this year, so then I, but I was very excited, but then the, it didn't rain, so, um, but I have a few things that I really love that are new, and that the um, tobacco, the um, tobacco, what is it called? The what? Um, this? Nicotania. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I just pruned it back, otherwise it'd be blooming. It gets really big, really big. Um, white flowers mm -hmm. the um that's a new favorite that i want to grow again um, it comes in all colors and all sizes that's a little tall so I'm, i might try a smaller one um dahlias are a big a, um a favorite of mine and they my dahlias are just starting to bloom now so that's very exciting for me um got cosmos coming in that's another favorite that I'm just waiting for them to start blooming so I can start picking lots of bouquets. And they're just sort of, that's the a salvia. salvias are looking great. Yeah, those are great. That one came I back. I love this one. That one that came, came back. back. It did oh, nice. on its own. So I didn't even know it was gonna, so that was exciting Yeah. right there. I have also, um, and we can walk around there and if you want, or should we just, you wanna stay there and you wanna walk over here and look I'd at like my to tomatoes? I'd like to ask you a little bit about your fountain. Sure. Um, I, I love the way that you have it so it's constantly running down to the bottom instead of staying enclosed. Yeah. So that means that you arrange this like a 
kind of like a rock garden, mm -hmm. so the water can seep. Yeah, there's a the there's a reservoir source. under the under it. That's what I was getting to. Is where does the water come from? Yes. <laughs> Well, I bought that on Facebook Marketplace a couple mm -hmm. years ago for $20. And, wow. and it actually has holes in the bottom of this. And mm -hmm. the water would come out, and it's meant to be in a big, in a, in a big, um, like a pool. Like it's a surround, like it's, it's meant to be in there. But it, we didn't have that. So mm -hmm. if we just let the water run out the holes, it would just it'd be gone so in order to have the reservoir because it would go out as it is we have to fill this up a lot because it, it splashes all over and okay but yeah yep so that but i love it yeah yeah, yeah I think so. and are these glass bubbles in the back yes okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> no those are real bubbles <laughs> they're glass bubbles yeah they, they used to have those for my pond and i've got that little water feature over there and i have some some old those are antique um the fishing boy, well, like the little sure, fishing sure. things, whatever you call those. Yeah, I don't know. Boy, what like they're little boys. There's a name for them. There is. I, I don't of. remember what it is either, but mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about. Yes. <laughs> and they're very pretty and mm -hmm. popular as decorative items, too. Yeah. All right. So you mentioned you was, wanted to take us this way? Sure. Okay. Through the arch. Sunny yeah, so I do get a lot of good sun right here, which is great um, because it's a real challenge with the tree. And that tree now is starting to encroach upon this side of the garden. So, and then that tree, of course, you can see. So, this is a really good sunny area right here. Um, this is um, Verbena um, Boniarsis. Benariensis? But, but yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. One of my favorites. Love it. It's really pretty. Yeah. Um, the, the new favorite of mine, too, this year was this Jewels of Opar. They're not in the best of shape right now, but that was such a gorgeous plant. Definitely going to grow some more of those. That would be these here? Yeah. That's very delicate. Yeah, they're pretty. really pretty. <laughs> this anise, bees love it. And so do the Japanese beetles. <laughs> um, this is a French marigold. I like the marigolds that have the single petals, so it's French beautiful. marigolds. And I just love how it's just so huge. The plant's mm -hmm. so big. And it's a great cut flower because it's got such a long stem. Yeah. Vivid blossoms. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's really gorgeous. Pops. And you have your vining tomatoes. Yes. They typically would be up over the top by this time of year. But um, so I've done this for about three or four years now, and because I have very limited space, I, I've got 12 tomato plants in this little tiny area, and they, they really do great. They don't look like they're doing great, but they really do great. Um, this is a, just an odd year. Um, I grew all these from seed, actually, which su I was surprised that I was able to do that because I never, they're all heirlooms. So, if you see tomatoes popping up around my garden, that's what those are. Because if <laughs> one falls, it'll it'll grow. And there's a lot of volunteers, but they do come back true because they're heirloom tomatoes. So I like that. Mm -hmm. And I also like growing tomatoes that are all different colors. So, um, yeah, it's very yeah they're really pretty. And then the little teeny, teeny ones, they're like a current tomato. Mm -hmm. And they're just fun. Mm -hmm. So I grow them. My husband thinks they're really stupid, but I think they're fun. So. <laughs> He doesn't Pretty. have to eat them then. He doesn't have to eat them, but you know, he does. <laughs> <laughs> are they, are they sweeter than? They're other? not, they're, they don't, they taste like a normal okay. cherry tomato, but they look beautiful like on a platter mm -hmm. or like as a garnish. So mm -hmm. they're just, they're just fun to grow and they're mm -hmm. really prolific too. And I actually have some big tomatoes too, not just the teeny ones. Um, I have a, a pineapple, which is one of my favorites. I always grow that. It, and we just got some about this big last week and had our first BLTs of the season, oh, which mm. was really nice. So, and you can see there's a couple big tomatoes there that just aren't ripe yet. In here. Yep. And then there's a lot of dill and fennel just going wild all over my garden. It's lovely. And I do let it 
I let it go because I I like to I like to grow for the swallowtail mm -hmm. butterflies, and um, hmm. and I think it's pretty too. But I think um, a lesson I learned this year was that I can actually cut things back and they're going to grow better. And I think that would be one of one example. And my my flocks too. I think if I keep it low, it'll branch more and it'll look a lot better instead of mm -hmm. different heights. So that's a, a good lesson I learned. What is the the plant on the other side of the French marigold that's kind of a corally? That is a zinnia. It's a Peruvian zinnia. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I grew yeah. that from seed, so if you want some next year. Mm. <laughs> I think they're really fun, too. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're really cute. Mm. They're, yeah, I like those. So, so I grow a bunch of those every year. You will have more of these next year. I know, that's what I they heard. Seed I mean, that's what I've heard. They're and easy I'm, to control. Yeah, but, but yeah. I, w I think a whole row. Yeah, I, I don't know why I decided to do this. I, I always plant things way too close together, and then I regret it. But the <laughs> and these are giant cabbages, so they haven't even finished growing yet. They're <coughs> supposed to be giant. So, but next year I think maybe just a whole row of the jewels of Opar would be pretty. Yeah, mm -hmm. it would. Yeah. yeah. So they're so. supposed to be giant cabbages. My my cauliflowers are really slow this year too. Hmm. Slow time. These are not big compared to how big they're supposed to be. But the, I you know I really can't handle anything bigger than that though really. <laughs> so that they're just fine. Um, this this here is a type of basil that I bought. I got that at Deerfield Greenhouse. I love it. I will definitely grow that again. I don't even prune it back or anything. I just let it go and it's such a pretty plant. It's just such a great mounding habit. So, and this is more salvia. I have a lot of different salvias, which I really like as well. So. Have you noticed the hummingbirds, do they go for, um, they like salvias, correct? They do, yeah. So, and the, like, do they have a favorite color or colors you find? Reds, mm -hmm. they like red. Um, and something that always surprises me is that the hummingbirds love zinnias, and I never would have thought that they, because they're not bell-shaped and they don't look mm -hmm. like they'd even have any nectar, but they, yeah. but they do. So, and I and I love zinnias too, and I usually grow a lot. I have a few in here, um, but yeah, the hummingbirds. I, they. It's funny. I'll come out here. I only have one hummingbird. And he won't let anybody else in the garden. No, oh. I mean, he's chase, He's always chasing somebody away. Another hummingbird, which is disappointing. <laughs> I would. I see these people that have, you know, twenty hummingbirds flitting around, and I can't seem to. It's been that way for years too. I don't know how long they live, but anyway. Um, and he will also, if if I need to change the feeders, he'll come and he'll buzz me. Wow. And I I was thinking the hummingbird feeders must be like fast food, mm. you know, because maybe it's harder to get nectar from a flower, but they love those hummingbird feeders. I mean, they're, they're around all the time also getting nectar, and I probably am not seeing them, but but they like their, their yeah. feeders. <laughs> yeah. He likes his feeder, yeah, I should my say. My wife has a bully, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? He just, huh. when he's around, he don't want anybody by the feeder. He just chases everything away. That's what mine does. And, and yeah. We have, we have, we have quite a few hummingbirds, but he, was, and that bossy one's there. <laughs> he's yeah. the only one there. And I was hoping maybe he would, you know, get a mate and they would have babies or something, yeah. but. <laughs> they, uh, <coughs> they typically have several mates. Oh. Spread. And they won't even let their Maybe mates, it's the same one. They won't even let their mates <laughs> come into their feeding territory. Oh. They're, very, they're very selfish. Yeah, they yeah, are. They are. And, and <laughs> At least these kind are. But yeah, the ruby frogs. Maybe the ones are in, like the Anna hummingbirds are. And that was the other thing too, is I was devising all kinds of different fountains because I had it in my head that I was going to get a, 
find one and I was making like you saw the one over there I was I made it out of an old lamp part and I had another one that I made out of some old dishes and you know it was like stacked and um, I was hoping that I could get a hummingbird to come and want to take a bath in my fountain and mm. as a, use it as an attractive for more, more hummingbirds but then I read somewhere that that our that the ruby throated don't really like to take baths as much as like the Anna hummingbirds mm. <laughs> and some of the other types so mm. I haven't seen any of them go for my water, so it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. Nice. And, you know, over here is just more, just a lot of perennials, a lot of annuals. Um, Calendula is another one I love. Um, and I've, so I've got that. That came back on its own. Could you point the plants out? Yes just like an old-fashioned this is it oh sure and you can it, it's edible this you, um, so yeah I grew those when I was a kid you put them on salads yes yeah, yeah. yep and here's a nice color of aster yeah and these little blue ones plumbago I think yeah. so don't you have those I do yeah I do have hmm. those yeah. And they've really handled the tough summer very, very well. They have. They really have. Yeah. I've got an obedient, a couple obedient plants, and I know they spread as well, so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> I do like things that spread. Now, I do have a lot of flocks, too. And the pink flocks, you see a little bit of it, little remnants. I broke it off because it'll go to seed and keep spreading, and mm -hmm. it's very aggressive. Um, but it's pretty when nothing else is blooming, so... But I got that from my mother, from her house, many, many, many years ago. So it's kind of neat that I still have it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, all right. All perennials and annuals and what are lysianthus. These? Those and are all lysianthus, and the, those lysianthus? two I could have cut them back and let them bush out a little bit more. But those are great. I love those because just gorgeous. They're really pretty. They're very prolific and they last a long time in the vase too. Mm. So that's really I like to grow a lot of things for cutting garden. Yeah. So that's that's what and th yeah those are those are really good. These dahlias are stunning. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They're just yeah they I, they're just real. starting so that I, I'm so I've got some back there I've got some all around in here and I'm mm -hmm. um, I let so when I pick my dahlias I always get I choose colors that are gonna all be a bouquet you know, like a mm -hmm. range of in my mind and I that's the ones I pick so that one there and there's one back there too it's not not the one I ordered <laughs> 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 that light yellow <laughs> doesn't go oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but it happens sometimes mm -hmm. But you did order that one there. I did order yeah, that one there. That's a lovely color. And, and it's, I never liked the ball dahlias. So I've learned a lot about the dahlias. You know, there's the dinner plate ones and the decorative, mm -hmm. which are a little smaller than the ball. I never really liked them. Mm -hmm. But then I, when they're in a bouquet with a lot of other flowers, they're just mm -hmm. gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So then I started growing the ball dahlias too. And they're really fun. They're, I'm mm -hmm. starting to really like them. How do you so. buy them? Do you just buy the tubers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I buy them online at several different places. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. I think we talked about this already. And I keep them over, too, sometimes. Yeah. So sometimes that works, mm -hmm. sometimes. sometimes. Yeah. I'm going to try it again. If I love my dahlias, we'll see mm -hmm. if, if I like these colors. Um, and then, I'll, yeah, and I'm... You know, the problem I've had is they dry out and, mm -hmm. and then they just don't make it. But I think I'm going to try, you know, p some people, you know, packed them in sawdust or in, um, you probably have a good method or some. I don't do a lot of that because by the time I'm done, I just want to be done. You do, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> yeah. So I try not to. But it's, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they say sawdust or peat moss. Yeah, peat moss. Or, I'm going to try something like that and keep yeah. it in the basement. And yeah. I found um, at Paradigm Gardens, they have these little packets that add, will add humidity hmm. into like a box like that. So I bought some of those too. And it'll just kind of keep it humid in there so that they won't dry out. And that might help. So we're going to try. 
Yep. Well, good luck. Let's give it away. Let us know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then that elephant, um, or not elephant, it's a, it's a banana, just a, um, an ornamental banana back there in that pot. I'm going to try to overwinter that too. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Yeah. It's oh, great. All the colors, even in yeah. this time of year. Yes. Yeah, sometimes I feel like it just. Well, you know, in the spring, you know, I've got the tulips and things, but this is really my favorite time of year in the garden because of the dahlias, because of the zinnias mm -hmm. and everything sort of... Late summer. All the, yeah, everything's just at you, its peak. You've got a lot of dianthus. I do. Is this the second time through for it? Mm-hmm. I didn't even remember that I had it. I must have planted it last year <laughs> and forgotten. Mm -hmm. I was, it was very, um, it was a nice, delightful surprise in the mm -hmm. spring because it's very long blooming. Yeah. So that's been really nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have the ferns been hard on them this year? It is, yeah. Yeah, you can Mine see. Mine too, it just. It's just, um, it's so I dry. Water them too. I try to water them. I try and yeah, I I just can't and that's why I was talking about doing getting an ir irrigation system next year because it's just too hard to especially right up here because the hose you know it's up there and, and bringing it around and mm -hmm. it's hard. Yeah. So yeah. Climbing pole beans? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I don't know that we'll be able to get any off mm. of it, but <laughs> I see some they're glasses. so high. But um, yeah, I, they're purple, so Ooh. I'm looking forward to those. I have some others in the back, like I have a little circle garden that I've got some um, bush beans in there that I grew that they're also like a purple stripe that um, I got from Baker Creek. Um, oh, and see my... Um, I, oh, yeah. What? That pepper plant. Oh yeah, that's wow. a. It's some kind of an ornamental pepper. So it is really neat looking. Yeah. I and I just got some new plants, and they I didn't water them enough, so they'll come back. But they sort of just. Is this an ebird or a deer field? I don't remember where I got that. I did get it locally though. Oh, you'll have to see the one I have back here too. I will. And then these two, I've got high hopes for yeah. um, the Celosia there. Uh -huh. It's going to be like a big, a big head, a big mottled oranges and reds and yellows. Oh, I'm really good. looking forward nice. to that. So it's coming along. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I'm out here babying it all the time to make sure. <laughs> wow. That's so, good. yeah, lots of you know. This is another uh, uh, milkweed. It's pretty beat up right now but it's a great it's a great one and I, I grew some more from seeds so it's around and I'll have more lex next year too but this is a a big fennel that kind of took over a little bit and this here is a new new for me a passion flower passion vine so lovely you seen that I just love um, those blossoms I do too and I never thought I could grow one but you're doing it the and it looks like the sweet peas, there's not really much here anymore, but <laughs> they didn't do much. I think next year will be the year for the sweet peas because they say, what they say, that it, the first year it sleeps, then it creeps, then it leaps. leaps. So yep. I think next year is going to be the leap year <laughs> <laughs> for my, for my um, sweet peas. This is my comfrey, oh. which I love. It's not in bloom right now, but it's a great plant. It's a nice plant. It's a very nice plant. Does it come back? Yeah, it, it, it's a perennial. Okay. It gets beautiful flowers on it. Bees love it. And mm -hmm. it's, um, it's also a great fertilizer. You can cut all the leaves off and you can make a tea out of it, a fertilizer tea. Mm -hmm. Or you can just put it right around your plants and it's a great fertilizer. It's pretty. You must like the drought. It looks it, good. It doesn't mind, seem to mind it. Yeah which is good these are these are cute yeah those are garlic chives yeah <laughs> ah. great yeah so they're they're getting a little out of control right now so mm -hmm. i think i'm going to have to do something but um yeah so just 
This is the circle garden over here. Oh, and here, here's another ornamental pepper. I think I got that wow. at, where did I get that? Wow. <laughs> oh I'm my one. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I may have got that at Ebert's. Right now they have some cool fall stuff. And I went a little crazy and bought a bunch of, um, you know, Rubecchia and spent another $200. And <laughs> like, what am I doing? It's not hard to do. <laughs> not hard to do. <laughs> no. It's like, why am I doing no. this? But yes, yeah, so this is my circle garden. I, in the middle are strawberries, just my June strawberries. Mm -hmm. And then I plant lettuces in here and I do have my sucker crop of lettuce coming. These are the beans I told you guys about. Um, oh, yeah. They're, they're called Blau House, I think. And um, there's, I need to pick them. They're all different colors of just purple stripes. Wow. And um, yeah, give them a try. Wow. There's a lot of them, so that's good. Try one if you want. I love picking beans just right off the vine and eating mm -hmm. them. All right. Um, I will take you up on that. Yeah, go right ahead. If I like it, if, you know, maybe I'll grow it again. I have also had a lot of beans that just overwinter and come right back. They just come back on their own. They they plant themselves. Wow. So that's cool. So I don't mind that. This combo is gorgeous. The thank you. The garlic with the kale. Yep. Yep. That's the, the kale, and then I just. How is it? Mm. Is it good? <laughs> yeah, um, I have to pick some it's of those. Good flavor. And it's, it, very and it's supposed to be if you don't, like, you can let it, it won't just, like, get, you know, really woody and old like mm -hmm. a lot of beans will if you leave them on too long. So, okay, good. Um, <laughs> I have a cuc I haven't had much luck in, with cucumbers this year. Had that one growing up, what, up the, you know, up this little trellis and. I don't know. Oh. Hmm. That was a hummingbird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Running off an intruder. <laughs> yes. Yep. That's oh, what he wow. was doing. <laughs> How dare him. I know. I mean, there's plenty of nectar in this garden for everybody. Mm hmm But yeah, so. This is kale? That's kale. Yeah. Ever dehydrated? I haven't done it myself, but I've had kale chips. You do that? Like with your dehydrator, <laughs> I should try that. I should try it because I love, I, yeah. I used to grow a lot of kale because I um, used to make a green juice and I would drink, yeah. that I drink every day and it was kale, cucumbers, apples, and um, spirulina and, and some others, you know, so I need to start doing that again. <laughs> yeah, so. This is a larch my husband's trying to save that I um, didn't want anymore. It was gonna, it was a bonsai and in training, and <laughs> he saw it and said, "Oh no, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go back in a regular pot, <laughs> and then I don't know what he plans on doing with it." But it, I told him, I said, "I don't want it," but. What are you going to do? <laughs> so yeah, um, I have hops growing on my daughter's playhouse. And that's um, a clematis. It's called Autumn Beauty. Hmm. And it will get little teeny white flowers. It's oh. a fall blooming. It's a pretty one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And back there, it's not blooming yet, but it's the goldenrod. I can't remember the name of it. Do you have some of that too, don't you? Oh, the fireworks? Fireworks, goldenrod. That's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. That'll be great. So that's really pretty. Is that an oak leaf hydrangea? It is, over yeah. There? Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks like it was pretty when it was, you know, lots of yeah, flowers. Yeah, it was. I should probably mm -hmm. cut those off. But mm -hmm. yes, it, it, I think it. I think it just bloomed. I mean, just this year. I've had it there for a mm -hmm. long time, but I don't know if it's not getting enough sun. I was actually surprised to see the flowers because I wasn't thinking I was ever going to get any. Yeah, that's kind of pretty much it. This is a bittersweet that um, doesn't get enough sun to bloom. 
So instead, it's just taking over the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably good. Then you don't, it won't seed on the, you. <laughs> these these ferns don't get as much sun. Yeah. And they're they're a little better than yeah, the other ones. Better. Yeah. But I have not watered those at all. No. Not at all. And yeah. oh, and you know, I guess we could go over here and see one of my my big um, big regrets. <laughs> um, since we want to talk about <laughs> those kinds of things, right? Yeah. That's right. Yep. I showed everybody my Franken cauliflower. <laughs> yeah, well that wasn't bad compared to this. So, um, so over this right here along the edge of my house is my hosta garden. But I made the mistake of planting some lilies of the valley in there. And they're just choking it out. So I really need to go in and I know it's a tough job because I, I've done that before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not here, but mm -hmm. um, up north, um, we had a beautiful garden up my, my mother-in-law and she, I think she brought some lily of the valley and it just, it just takes over everything. It's, I mean, I, was, I dug up some lilies and it was actually strangling the lilies. It was just wrapped around them and I, um, so yeah. They're really pretty in the spring, but but look at them. Oh my, I had some really nice hostas in there. Right. And they're still nice. Yeah, They'll they be are. fine. Yeah. Still nice. They don't get a lot of sun. This is the north side of my house. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I regret that. I will never do that again. I will never. And you see it on Facebook or somewhere all the time. Free. If you come and dig, maybe I should do that. <laughs> I don't want to trick anybody else into making that mistake. <laughs> if you have a spot where you don't need anything but a ground right. cover. Yeah, and that would be fine. Then it would do it. But, yeah. no. They're best in a spot where there will only be lilies of the valley and nothing else. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yep. <clears throat> well, that says a lot because hostas are tough. Mm -hmm. and if, yeah. If they struggle with that. They are That's struggling. Saying something. Yeah. Yeah. So I really got to get in there and start working. It's not going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> but if we got some rain, it'd be easier though, because the ground will be a little softer. easier, a little softer to work with. It's, it's rock hard. But yeah, it's really it makes it harder. Yeah. Um. I do have a lot of milkweed that just sort of grows all over the place and I let it go um, just for the butterflies, but it doesn't look the prettiest. <laughs> when my sister came over, she was pretty horrified. She's like, oh my God, I can't believe you're letting that <laughs> noxious weed grow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're worse. My wife They're worse, worse. yes. Yeah. They're They're all over the place. Oh. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And we talked in the early spring about the pond, right? Which I d we just didn't get around to doing anything with it, but we're still going. To, we're still planning on doing that. It's still on the delete list. It is still on the delete <laughs> list. <laughs> and you know we have no fish in there. Um, do you have some frogs that still live there? And we'll relocate them. And then probably should do it. You know before Take summer is over. Hibern hibernation, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, they do hibernate and they, come, you know, they're usually fine, but sometimes they're not, too. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm going to take a quick peek at it. Of course, yeah, we can just make our way around. Sure. The lady ferns don't seem, they, they do a little better than the ostrich ferns. Um, as far as uh, dealing with the drought. But yeah, yeah, so that's pretty much it. And then we've circled back and there's the front, which is always, oh, I'm always working on that too, as you know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's really in water. <laughs> And here we are coming full circle. Yeah. That's a beautiful example of that kind of begonia. 
I love <laughs> those. Yeah. yeah. I think I bought all of that at Ebert's this spring. They always have a lot of great um, begonias, choices of begonias. and So yeah, I was happy with that combination this year. It's lovely. Lots of good ideas. <laughs> yes. Yep. Well, I, I must have that pepper. <laughs> I, mean, I must acquire okay. for next year peppermint <laughs> that. Yeah, it's That's so pretty. It's just amazing. And it likes sun. Y yeah, and, and you know. Just and the spot that I would put it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really it's really pretty. The, the one in the pot that, did you look at that one? To the, the round, those are, no, the, I think this one's edible, but the other one, one isn't. Which I, I like that, like a, an ornamental that's also edible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because usually ornamental peppers are just ornamental peppers and there's really no purpose other than just looking pretty. <laughs> they're, they're a wonderful accent shape, yeah. garnish shape in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. Dirt, dirt color. Yeah. yeah. So I have one last question yes. for you and that is about this beautiful ornamental grass. Yes. What is that called in that? <laughs> <laughs> you have some of that too. It's, uh, uh, variegated Hakanakloa. Yes. Yep. I love it. Mm -hmm. And I, it, it actually is doing well in the drought because it, it's thickened up this year. And I was, mm -hmm. I actually, I might end up getting more or I might just, I, I kind of, I don't know. I have different thoughts about, but I wanted it just kind of draping over the path. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I really like it. Yeah. It looks like it's pretty. It has a nice form. It, it, grows it in does. a clump mm -hmm. yeah and it, it doesn't get kind of messy no you know, it no has it's these good nice discrete clumps mm -hmm. so it's a good landscaping effect it is yeah mm -hmm. and it likes shade this used to be more shady we had another tree i don't know we even, i don't even remember where the tree was i think it was right here yeah. and then that i think they took it down or something i don't remember what happened to it but we had another maple and it was really shady up here, but then, then it's, now it's not so shady, but. Well, I wanna thank you for yeah. having us over today and well, showing us you. the treat of the Monarch release. That was really <laughs> nice. Yeah. Taking us on a tour of your late summer garden. Thank you. It's very yeah. inspiring. Yes. <laughs> it's very. always something different at your garden, always. Yeah. <laughs> Every day, I can't imagine how you don't spend Many, many hours just <laughs> looking at it all. <clears throat> yeah. It's always a work in progress, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It just never, it never stops. It never stops. Never stops. But, yeah. but yeah, it's great. I, lo I love doing it. I love doing it. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thanks for in being interested. Oh. I just love plants. It looks like uh, mm -hmm. looks like Otto's got a little something. He's got some treats for yes, us. Yes, he's, he's 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 coming with the goodies. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> From his own bounteous garden. That's right. Oh my yes. What have you got for us today? I have tomatoes and peppers, and I have some strawberry uh, strawberries dipped in chocolate back there. <gasps> Oh, I you didn't have. get any of that yet? No. Me neither. <laughs> so we got to go have some of that. I've, I've, uh, giving you some leather that I would just like your opinion on it. it um, I like it a lot. I did like the apple. I, I liked yeah. it with yeah, the spices. Nice flavor. Mm -hmm. it, um, mm -hmm. Very good. Like I said, it has no sugar or sweetener in it. It's just um, yeah. applesauce with apple pie spice, which is c c cinnamon and nutmeg. But yeah. <laughs> well, on that note, we're going to go eat, and I want to thank you for joining us today at WLOOCATV's Waterloo Gardens late summer episode over at Lisa Hertert's house. And as always, if you or someone you know really loves gardening and likes talking about plants and would like to share that love with the community, please contact us at WLOOCATV at gmail.com. We do want this to be an ongoing series with mm -hmm. new yards and fresh people every growing season. So don't be shy. 
step on up and send us an email. <laughs> Thank you.